Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Shane O'Connor. I'm in the Midlands, and this is. My name's John Lennon. It sounded. <laughs> it's, I didn't. I, I'm sorry. You flabbergasted me then because it was like uh, I was trying to ascertain whether it was any good or not. <laughs> was that what the pause was? I thought it was a sort of a delay on the line. No, it was delaying me, Ed. <laughs> yeah, it's not much we can do about that. No, there is no technical cure. Anyway, um, so my my Brummy accent wasn't really up to much. Is what I th- you're I'd saying, have to listen back effect. to it. I think it was. I think it was okay. <laughs> Right. Your John Lennon wasn't bad, considering he's no longer with us. Anyway, um, the truth is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am actually no boys and girls this week because we're discussing a show that's a little off limits for the young ones. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I am indeed Adrian in the uh, Deep South and uh, Shane is in the Midlands. Oh, yeah. With a more convincing accent. Well... (laughs) Uh, we'll get into your private life a bit later on. <laughs> now, I think I would be in doo-doo if I try. I got the sense earlier. I, I, look, let, wind back, wind back, rewind. Uh, if you, this is your first show, uh, then a uh, special welcome. And uh, we are the Comedy Slab, or are we the Comedy Slab? I don't know. We're the Slabbies. It's not quite clear. Anyway, we put a different show on the Slab each week to dissect. <laughs> it will make sense eventually if I keep going long enough, you know, 37 Monkeys typewriting, Shakespearean sonnets and all that. And, uh, yeah, so uh, this week we are studying a podcast. But just before we get into Ellie and Anna have issues, I've got an issue because I I think you misunderstood me in an earlier show, in our early days, uh, Shane. Yeah. Sort of three or four comedy slabs in where you thought I was about to dissect or at least suggest the dissection of a stand-up act. Hmm. Does that ring any bells? Yeah, uh, wasn't that um, wasn't that Stuart Lee? Hmm. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're checking your scripts. I've just thrown my contract away. All right. Okay. Yeah, go on. Um, well, it's a solo show now, isn't it? If you're throwing your contract away. Anyway, the point was, I think you misunderstood where I was going with it. But are we saying because we never had this discussion, so we'll have it in front of our listening public hmm. around the world. Um. Have you effectively put a veto on us dissecting, not that we've ever done it thus far, but a live act? Well, like a stand-up routine? Yeah. Um, I, I didn't want to put a veto on it because, I mean, I, I'm one of these people who hate rules because, um, mm. you know, they're there to be broken, aren't they? That, that, that kind of, you know, that is where the creativity comes from. But I, I just, like, normally a stand-up act, you're talking about generally about an hour, Mm. minimum and i'm just thinking about time that that was the only reason i said it and also i'm not really sure how you would critique and review like a string of gags you know in in that sense we are talking about going there in person a live act oh we're sitting in going to a comedy club kind of thing oh you were talking about a recorded or it's kind of tv version of yeah that. yeah mm, i don't know okay. I, mean, I mean the only reason i said that is because um is because i thought well there's so much great tv and radio to do yeah that that was you know it wasn't for any other sinister reason why why do you ask i didn't feel it was sinister no actually well it's not a stand-up act but i did want to recommend a a a musical but it's actually a largely a comedy musical but um we can't really do it in a, a full show i thought the the limitation you felt was that people listening it would be much harder for them to when I misunderstood your misunderstanding, as I thought, yeah. it'd be much harder for people to go and see uh, a live show. Well, there's that as well. Has isn't been, it? yeah. In have, your you locality. Been, have you been to see Gone with the Wind again? <laughs> <laughs> no, no contraire. Um, I wanted to recommend. I'll recommend it now because we won't be able to slabberdize it. But um, if you ever get a chance to see Six, the musical, it is. Uh, it's about the Six Wives of Henry the Eighth. Uh. And uh, it's about as far from uh, a tedious history lesson as it's possible to get. It's just hilarious. The words are so sharp and bang on. And it's very much in a, an R&B contemporary musical style. Did, and, you, did you see it in uh, town, darling? I did, darling, in London town, oh, where London I was born. Town. Oh, yes. But uh, it's going round the country a little bit, doing a little bit of an English tour. It's off to Surrey, then down to Hampshire. It does sound a bit southerly, doesn't it? But then it is 
Well, it has been. No, no, no. We're, Hear me we're out. We're going all over the world, darling. We're going to Surrey and Hampshire. <laughs> the home kindies. Yeah. No, it's been it's been to Edinburgh either this year or the previous year. I think it may be going. I don't know about next year. But then it comes back to London, which of course I'm I'm obsessed with. And, Who's in it? Um, oh gosh, they're not big names to my knowledge. Oh, they're no. it's very uh, young talent, but talent being the word, amazingly uh, talented. Also, the band are all female. Obviously, the six wives are. A female. The writers, uh, the writer of the lyrics is female. It's just a man has written the music, which has really let it down. No, I'm joking. Huh. Uh, just fantastic. And it's, then it's coming back to the artist theatre in the West End um, indefinitely, really, at least until April of next year, I think. Oh. April, May? No, bookings till May. Six, uh, that's a comedy musical. I was, I've never. I don't think I've ever been to a musical where I've laughed out loud so much that I missed the next line. So I need to get the download uh, uh, of the music. Right. Anyway. The, the, I, I, I hate musicals as well, I should tell you that, before we go any oh, further. Oh, well, no, I'm, I'm not a particular fan of them, but I think you would make an exception. For, well, I don't know. No, I you misunderstand. <laughs> I hate musicals. Yeah, but this isn't your ordinary musical. This is witty and fantabulosa. Right. Uh, and there's got music in it? Well, do they sing? <laughs> Yeah, but so as a music concert, I and you're a musician. I hate musicals with a no, passion. I need, no, that's silly just to write I always, it off. No, I always have done. I always have. To be honest with you, I'd write it off because it's like it was all... Is it trying to prove a point with all women or something? <laughs> you might find it a bit liberal. Nah, there is, I, there I, is that danger. See, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go and see it just for that. You'd have said off with their heads. If, if they start preaching to you before you get on the bus to go and see it, it's not worth going to see in my view, but there you go. That's just how I feel. And nobody well, can change that. That's the good okay. thing. Okay. <laughs> You've decided they can't do Well, may I say that anyone listening, and you're, that includes you, uh, are free to go and have a look at the trailer, which will take up one minute of your life. I hate musicals. And, <laughs> okay. I hate wasting my time. Okay, to the matter in hand. So oh, yeah, welcome. I forgot about that. That's a yeah, yeah. surprise. <laughs> I nearly wrapped up the show, so thanks for <laughs> yeah, listening. Anyway, next week. <laughs> yes, so we will have three clips of the show we're uh, slabberdizing, uh, which is, uh, to repeat... Ellie and Anna have issues. Now, this starts out as a radio show on Heart. They are just Heart now, aren't they? Not Heart FM. You'd think I'd know this, wouldn't you? Although the company's called Heart Radio it? Network, isn't it, I think? Or is that the parent no, wait, company? No, they're global now. Global is the parent uh, company. And it's a global original. Original. <laughs> that was an original pronunciation of original. Uh, a global original podcast, free at the point of download, of course. And what it is, is an adapted version with a little bit of extra material over and above what they do on Sunday nights. And it has to be late because, as I was intimating earlier, um, it's not for the young'uns. So it carries, as a podcast, it carries a E for explicit um, warning. I'm going to really we struggle don't... with that, I am, you know, as I, get, as I get more into parenthood. Because I, I, when you said that, I never even picked that up. Right. I, I, I forget that, you know, when you become a parent, you've got to become... Your child censor as well, haven't you? And yeah, you see, you, rules are made to be broken, though, Shane. You were just telling us. Well, when I watch Judge Judy, and it says um, <laughs> the following program, this is this is on CBS uh, reality, and they say the following program contains scenes not suitable for younger viewers. Mm. And I spend the next thirty minutes watching the program, thinking, what what are they referring to? <laughs> Well, great parent you're going to be. Well, maybe you don't feel the need to censor. There are liberal parents who, um, you know, kids will tell them to F off and use their first name and all of that. Yeah. Um, so each to their own. Who am I to judge? Um, anyway, shall we get into the first clip or shall we have the... Are you suppressing laughter there? Yeah, no, I was going to go, well. I was going to go, oh, F off, Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's the thing. You're not my dad. Um, <laughs> It's, we're, <laughs> no, really, you're goodness not. Goodness for that. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're not too old to put, put, put over my knit. No, I don't, I'm not even going to finish that. Uh, that's wrong on so many levels. Um, now, look, we have got three clips from the podcast, so you don't just have to guess what it sounds like. Yeah. Should I be seeking, just before clip number one, should I be seeking uh, your headline? I think I should. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, your reaction. I'm getting nervous I, now. I, I've spent... I've spent the entire time since I've listened to it, wondering if I was on the right podcast, like this one. I mean, wondering whether I right. whether I left you, and then signed up for another podcast that I didn't know about. 
What does that mean in terms of uh, I, I what just, you make? I don't know why we were reviewing it. I just, I, I just didn't think it was. <laughs> Have I wound you up successfully? No, no, no. I just, I didn't think it was what we were. I, 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 any of the categories I thought we were talking about, I didn't think it fell into any of them, apart from it was once on the radio. <laughs> I, suppose, <laughs> I suppose that was. That That's was not it, really, really a category necessarily. Well, I mean. Yeah, I suppose like a possible category. Do you know what I mean? I, I, seriously, are you, I'm, I'm thinking. Are you what? saying, in effect, you don't think it is classed as comedy? It's this old God, question. definitely, I would say that. Yeah. If if well, that's comedy, then I'm a comedy genius. Well, uh, nice to be working with a genius. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? That's that's that was what I thought. I, Maybe I thought, what we're calling comedy. Well, your your definition of comedy is not as wide as mine because we've had this issue before, haven't we? Uh, in a very different way, different. Well, kinds no, of this shows. was a radio show. I mean, this this is mm. the, my least favourite kind of podcast, which is like um, reworked radio, just like edited together and banged out as a podcast, which is my least favourite by a country mile. Okay, and and I, I, it wasn't it wasn't like the Joan and Jerrica thing. Mm. I, I kind of, I th- I, although I wasn't a big fan, like a huge fan of it, I kind of didn't. I, I kind of understood why why we were doing it because it was like a you know it was an ad lib comedy improvisation sort of thing and you think oh okay yeah. I kind of get that but this was just it was just like a radio show I mean even to the point where they did like a press release interview in the middle of it and I was like it, are you sure this is what we're we're doing <laughs> well you see I I think we should get onto the clip just to uh, let everybody to either the... confirm or allay uh, people's fears yes yeah. depending on what they make of it so um have you got the um, info to hand sorry this is terribly amateur yeah no I've, I've got uh, uh, the um well well that's i mean it was it's like it, it's a it's a big lump of of like kind of links and and bits that they say on their radio show isn't it and they and they started off. Um, they were talking about driving. I think was the first clip that we were here. And they were talking about That's driving right, test. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, I mean, I was I was quite impressed because I don't think I've ever known anybody who had fifty driving lessons before, or certainly had admitted to having fifty driving lessons. But how, how many did you have? Uh, Thirteen, I think. Unlucky for some. Right. I, I've never kn- fifty five zero. But anyway, it's, it's possible. But uh, you've okay. got to be really, really going for it, haven't you? I, I would have thought. Anyway, I don't know. But I was like, wow, and that took up a lot of my time. Then I'm thinking, wow, fifty. And then I started working out how much they were a lesson at the time, and I think that's probably at least five hundred quid, um, depending yeah, on when. There's probably more than that, isn't it? I would have thought. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but they were talking about the fact that they just, well, they were they were comparing notes when it came to uh, to driving skills. Have a listen. I once had to call out the AA because I borrowed my neighbour's car and um, I thought the reverse would, was broken. I thought, oh, I can't get it into reverse gear. Um, turns out I just had one of those uh, gear sticks where you have to like, lift up the, the lever on the gear stick. <laughs> so I, got, I called the AA out and the man literally got, sat in the car and was like, you do that. And I was like, oh, thank, you. <laughs> Sorry about that. thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was such an idiot. <laughs> And I, that's one of the better days of me in a car. So. I drove into my parents' lounge when I was uh, 18. <laughs> that was, they were just watching EastEnders. And suddenly it was like, good home. Like a scene out of an action movie. Literally, I was coming back from a job uh, on the telemarketing uh, communications for water coolers. Pow Wow Now, I think it was called. Pow Wow. Uh, Pow Wow Water Coolers. I'd been working the phones all day. I was really tired and a bit disillusioned in life. And literally, again, the, it was the accelerator versus the brake. <laughs> Quite oh, basic stuff. No. I am dyslexic. So that is slight communication uh, issue, mm. uh, which is nerve wracking when driving. Um, but yeah, just accelerated up the drive and smashed into my parents' lounge as they were having their cup of tea. Wow. Isn't it great to have children? <laughs> children, they give back in so many ways. Isn't it great that we really um, underline how women are really great drivers? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay, maybe not advancing your favourite uh, cause of uh, feminism, uh, Shane, when it comes to driving, uh, not exactly busting any of the old stereotypes I grew up with. It used to be a term of abuse to say women drivers. Um, uh, they're not particularly helping that cause, but hey. Uh, Tell you what I thought was interesting as well, and it's a London conversation. Um, right. You know, people talk about the London bubble. I mean, that's very much how I think people in, in the rest of the country view people in London. They live in this, like, London bubble. And this, okay. this, I think one of them, I, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. 
Oh, uh, very close in, in yes, yeah, voices. I struggled yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah a, 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 bit, a bit like Ant and Dec, um kind of thing, although you can tell there's Ant and Dec now, can't you, because Ant is the one that turns up on the bus. But um, <laughs> That was unnecessary. <laughs> also, they're not... Re- you could say they're now in the London bubble, but they're not from... London originally. No, you? no, but they kind of. It's it was like almost. Oh, we're brought. We're in London. That's where we're making it. We're broadcast. But there was. My point was they were just saying about how uh, one of them said, "Oh well, I, I don't. I don't drive because I don't. Mm. I find it quite scary. And I don't like. It. I'm not very good at it. And and like f- most people, if you don't live outside London, public transport is so rubbish in most places that you know. You, you, There's no you, choice. Yeah, you got to drive. So. <laughs> So that was a. I thought it was a very Londony kind of thing. I didn't know. Presumably, this broadcasts all over the UK. Does it? I'm guessing. Uh, it I've, does. Yes. I've, I've never listened to Heart FM. I don't. Uh, I don't. My my wife has it on from time to time, but it's a ladies' radio station, isn't it? I think. <laughs> you see, I never get those stereotypes, but they, you know, I'm maybe not your typical bloke. No, that's um, the, it's it's the, it's the that is their demographic, isn't it? They, they... Oh, it's, it's definitely skewed that way. But I think we, for the purposes of the slam, I think it's interesting to to sort of roam around, try all different types, uh, even the types of shows that you don't consider comedy. Um, it's not a comedy program, though, is it? Do you know what I mean? Before before we start recording, we were talking about some mothers do have them and porridge, and, right? Yeah, and you know and the stuff that we do, and even Dear Joan and Jericho and all you know that kind of pushing the boundaries and Stuart Lee and. They're comedy programs. This isn't. This is just like a radio program that they've they've chopped up and stuck in a podcast. Well, uh, yeah. Well, you, I just thought there was a sufficient element of comedy. Um, did you for, laugh for at any to, of it? Yeah, I did. Not you know, not all the way through. What I liked was the chemistry and the fact they do seem to like each other and the. I don't know uh, the the reality of the situation, but I'd be prepared to guess that they probably are mates. Um, but they, I thought they bounced off each other to use that expression very well. Uh, I don't know if you can grant them that, perhaps at least. I was totally exhausted by the time I'd finished <laughs> listening to him for half an hour. For the second time, I was nearly in tears. <laughs> That's how tired no, see, I was. I, I used problem. to I used to work with with a with um, a woman who sounded who who talked with the same kind of intensity that they both do, um, yeah. and, and I know it's ramped up because they're on the radio. They're performing, yeah. But yeah. I just used to find her absolutely exhausting. <laughs> it just constant, just like it was just like, oh, would you just shut up for a minute, please? Um, and that that's how I that's how I came away from it. Just I just I was exhausted. And yet, listener, you married her. Oh, no, sorry, wrong, wrong woman. Don't pass that on. <laughs> I'll be ruined, ruined. Um, now, no, here's, here's the thing. Well, Ellie is a comedian, Ellie Taylor. Um, and I, I think, what was that? I said blimey. <laughs> Do you know what this is, though? This is payback for you complaining so much about Rob Newman the other week. Oh, God, I can thought, we do I'll Rob Newman next nice, week? <laughs> yeah, give him some nice, light, easy entertainment. What could possibly go wrong? He can't possibly complain. You were complaining uh, with Rob Newman on Radio 4 show where he gets into uh, chromosomes and DNA and all sorts, the yeah. music of the spheres and gamelans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you complained then of having to work so hard to listen to it that you should be paid. And I thought, well, could you give him something nice and light for a change. That'll shut him up. But you're now complaining this is hard work as well. Oh, dear. It was, I just found it... Didn't you... Did you... I mean, could you sit and listen to... to it's To me, it's like if you imagine a spectrum and you've got, you know, radio bloke at one end... Yeah. This is This is the other end of the spectrum, isn't it? I mean, this is like, you know... Radio Mrs. Bloke or Radio Bloquette or whatever you want to call it. Or Radio it's... Girly. Yeah. Um, probably shouldn't use that term, but they are actually cranking that side of things up. And, and so for me, I kind of, I, I was almost like at, at the wrong meeting. You know what I mean? I'm kind of this, this, <laughs> Not for the first time is, in is this, this podcast. Is this group therapy? Um, <laughs> and it turned out it wasn't, and I was at the, completely the wrong that's how I felt. I felt alienated. I felt there was only one point. I'll come to it a bit later on, but there's only one point where I actually felt where I connected in any way, shape, or form with the, with the whole thing. It's because, you know, I'm sorry um, if you're using shoes 
as a mm. as a, a you know as a, a metaphor. Friends are like shoes, as they do a bit later. Are, are they? I, th- I immediately thought, what smelly? <laughs> well, that probably speaks volumes for your friends, doesn't it? I had my shoes. Um, <laughs> well, we we will hear that in the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I'm down here and you're up there, and oh, a couple of hundred miles separates us. Tell me, tell me, um, tell me what you honestly tell me what you think then, because I'm, I'm all the way through as well. The other thing is, it was I mean, I I didn't know whether you'd heard it before or whether you'd caught mm-hmm. up with them before, whether you knew them before, and so whether you'd chosen it because you'd heard it and you liked it. Uh, it was that I'd heard one before, and I thought, oh, that's that, that's a, a fresh sound. I just thought it was. Bit different, and I like ringing the changes for the for the slab. Mm. Um, did Did you listen to the whole of it, the, the one that you heard before? Did you listen to the whole? Is it half an hour? Is it? I think. Yeah, I believe I did. Okay. Yes, well, previous did... episode. Right. But if you ask me, then am I going to be their number one fan? Uh, the answer is no. Right. But then, generally, uh, as I've explained on previous shows, I just graze with podcasts. I can't say there's any one podcast that come rain or shine, or indeed series as you know tv or radio i'm rarely organized enough to actually sit down my one guilty pleasure at the moment is uh, is not a comedy at all it's but it's a fairly lightish drama press about the newspaper industry right uh, i don't know if you've seen any of those if no but, i haven't but if if we right. if we were like when in an alien body swap <laughs> and and well, I, I go into your body. Yeah, and I was you. Ooh, and you that and is me. alien. Uh, yes, yeah. you, you don't know. That. <laughs> it's I'll alien to me. You went till you go to the doctor's appointment on Thursday. You'll know what's alien. <laughs> and, and then, so that, we, that's if I, I live that long. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Hang on. What do you know that I don't? Um, <laughs> but so if we did an alien body swap, the thing that would frustrate the most about um, you, me being mm. me being you, would be exactly that. Okay, he doesn't watch anything. You don't watch us like because you know what I'm like. I'll watch us. I'm I'm watching actually. We did was it last week? We did Quacks. Mm, and yeah. I, I just watched episode three last night, so I'm watching. I'm going all through the series, right? And, and watching and watching them all because that's how I like to do things around here. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, it, now it's how I like to do things around here since I became you. Oh, okay. yeah, exactly. And but you, what you, was it the you, Eddie I mean, Murphy movie? Was we, that the Face Off or? That's yeah, um, John Travolta and uh, Nick Cage. Oh, that you was. Sure? Yeah, I watched oh, it the other night again. Oh, for a moment I thought you said Nick Cave. That's a slightly different. <laughs> not, not Nick Cave. Nick, <laughs> that'd Nick be a Cage. good. That'd be a good swap. Uh, I saw Nick Cave at Victoria going to um, the food and wine store. Oh. Um, anyway, I suppose he has to shop, you know, despite being an international superstar. It's just, it's just weird when they do, isn't it? That's the only thing, really. Yeah, but, uh, you'd think he'd pay people to do it for him, but. Never mind. How did you know, um, so, how did you know okay. Ellie Taylor was a comedian? Because I looked them up and, and all I could find, Ellie Taylor had, had presented Snog, Marry and Avoid. I must admit, a programme that I didn't... Uh, <laughs> Not number one on your list. Didn't watch. My, <laughs> That's did, a did, shock. Did I tell you this? My dad always used to say, when BBC Three was on, uh, was on telly, on telly, my dad always used to say, my dad's nearly 90, and he, and he, and he said that he always used to go, oh, and there's some crap on BBC Three. And I go... It's because it's for thirteen-year-olds, Dad. That's why. You, I don't think I don't think you're in there when it comes to you. Well, that's be. the other thing. We aren't, as you've kind of alluded to, we aren't in the um, the mainstream demographic, the intended audience for Ellie and Anna. But to come to your question about how did I know she was a stand-up? I can't quite remember. I think it might have been in the blurb for the podcast. Oh, okay. Uh, it's certainly uh, on the wikification. And Anna um, Whitehead comes from print media, doesn't she? She was she was a columnist at Marie Claire, wasn't she? Again, not really on my radar when I go to the <laughs> newsstand. Although, interestingly, you've retained that fact, or at least written it down. I wrote right it down. I wrote it. Well done, you. I, well I fought done back you. the tears and wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's yeah, she's a showbiz reporter type, I guess. Uh, she has a blog. I've got that far at least. Anna Whitehouse's blog. But lest we be too judgmental, I was just reading a very moving piece by her in the Telegraph, so she can write for the grown-up papers. Very sad. She's had uh, two or three miscarriages, mm. but she wrote very intelligently about it and and with, with a degree of psychological insight. And 
even if I hadn't said seen that article, I was going to at least float the idea. And now I feel I've got uh, you know documentary evidence in the Telegraph. But I was going to float the idea to you before you got overexcited about it being at the lighter end of the scale. That that's what they do for the show. That you and I can have serious conversations either as part of the comedy slab or when we stop recording. Mm. It doesn't mean that's the. Uh, uh, the extent of uh, of what we do, just comedy, or what what Ellie and uh, Anna do. Well, that, that's what I say. If 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 that's comedy podcast, then as as is a comedy podcast, surely. And I and I uh, would I would say that as isn't a comedy podcast. As a podcast about comedy, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that we're comedians in that. No. But, I'd certainly say you weren't. I've got no, to say, say as well, neither of us. It's, it's, it doesn't appear in the top 100 podcasts, and yet mm. it appears on the front page of iTunes. How does that happen? That's that really... Ah, uh, well, I did see, before you go for conspiracy theory, I did see some graphic in my searchings whereby it's very... And it could be the charts generally, the podcast charts are very um, fickle, like the audience, like me. Um, so they they have been in the well, I couldn't say high how high the positioning was but they have been featured in the charts and then the, and the, on this graph it suddenly disappears for a week then it comes back again so mm. I mean you can raise questions about how reliable is the chart or is it just reflecting the fact that maybe this no I was going to say the sample size but the sample size ought to be a hundred percent. That's the difference uh, with electronics. Uh, uh, it's all the big companies keeping the indies out again, isn't it, really? I, I have to say, the other thing is, as well, there are so many female double-headed podcasts now that mm. there's There's one by a woman called Alison Perry that's called Not Another Mummy Podcast, which I kind of think, you know, it's, it's like... It's a game of way. Yeah, it's like mm. art imitating life, imitating art, imitating life. And I, and I just kind of think... who I looked at the comments of, of the people who had all commented on it, and the majority, it's women for women. Interestingly, though, mm. I asked my wife and said, can you just come and stick an ear across this and have a listen and tell me, would you listen to this if it was on the radio? Um, mm. And she said, oh, no. Because wasn't there a survey done that said women don't like listening to women? I've certainly heard that years ago, uh, stuff we were told uh, working in radio about how to increase your audience. Supposedly... Well, there are these myths, aren't there? Supposedly women are in charge of the control of the radio. Well, they weren't in my car when I used to drive with uh, my lady wife. Uh, but, you know, yeah. there wouldn't be huge rows. But um, let's just say uh, I, that we had a rule that the driver could choose uh, what was on the radio. Right. And as I did most of the driving, yeah, I won that one. Shall I drive? No, no, no. God, I'm not listening to that again. <laughs> yeah, I get that. Anyway, let's get to what you um, called the uh, the PR element of uh, the radio show. Hmm. Uh, this is um, one of their two topics: is uh, internet dating, or more accurately, uh, the the hook being men still like to, uh, to to be in control. Never mind the remote control or the control of the radio. A bit sexist, but, but there you go. Well, that that is supposedly the result of the um, survey, but I, I can't say I'm shocked by it. Anyway, so they're going to announce after a little sting, of which there are a few in the uh, in the show, uh, they're going to announce the uh, contributor who's on the phone. We've got Rachel Lloyd on the line. Uh, Rachel is the eHarmony in-house relationship expert, and she's going to tell us a bit more. So, Rachel, why do you think it is that men? on online dating are more likely to make the first move? This has to be a reflection of what's going on in society, that men still feel it's up to them to make the first move. But shouldn't women, um, but, women just grab the, the bulls by the horn? <laughs> the bull by the horn. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, yes. Perhaps, you know, the sort of man that isn't going to be interested because you dared to sort of make an intro isn't the man for you yeah, anyway. I mean, I would, I would say seize the day, girl. Yeah, that's a good way to, like, sort out weirdos isn't it oh if he's gonna be like I'm taken aback by a woman saying hello would you like a cup of tea <laughs> and that's get it. rid of him flick him <laughs> off straight away <laughs> are there any are there any don'ts are there any big no-nos like not to do well the topless torso pictures that men seem quite keen on on some dating apps probably <laughs> are not necessarily the safest idea i think right. that they can actually put people off and less can be more so it's one thing to be really attractive and you know have a bit of attitude 
but I think to be really kind of quite sort of dare I say predatory doesn't come across as terribly attractive. I mean, predatory is never a good word no. in any kind of relationship, really, is it? What are you after for a man? Oh, just a sort of a predator. <laughs> <laughs> never, never been said. It's never been said. So this is the point when I was listening to the podcast that I started went, oh my God, they're doing doing press release radio now. Um, and exclaimed out loud, which is a bit pointless because I was in the house on my own at the time and nobody heard it. I think no, the no, cat was out I think as well. You, I th- we all move into our shouting at the radio and shouting at yeah. the podcast phase. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, because that, I mean, to me, that's, and you know, you know what it's like when you work in radio, you never hear it the same way again and you probably never enjoy it the way that you did before you worked in radio. But I just thought, oh, that's just like, to me, that was always like, the, the, they, they used to offer up these. You get emails all the while, wouldn't you, from these agencies saying, "Oh, we've got so and so from eHarmony to talk about relationships, and they found these results." And you, and you think like it's just lazy content. If you think, "Oh, I can't be bothered to set anybody up local or anybody mm. good or famous," you get something. And there was, I found there was a real jarring as well, wasn't there? Because they they wanted to kind of they were having a laugh, and this woman's trying to deliver a message. And so she was a bit straight, yes. You know, it kind of because she's representing that company, you see, isn't it? That's that's why. I mean, I've done plenty like that where I've kind of, you know, I think, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to muck about with this. And they're, <laughs> they're getting increasingly frustrated because they've got a three line whip and they've probably got the chief exec stood behind them with a, you know, razor <laughs> to their throat or something saying, say the right words. Um, but but if, the, if that is the case, the, the it's the chief exec or, you know, the powers that be within the company or the person themselves who's perhaps they frighten themselves, almost like you know, an electric fence effect. Mm. You, you hit it once and then you never go anywhere near it. She was actually missing a trick because if she'd gone along with the joke, it wouldn't have... It, I don't think it would have nullified her message any, anyway. And, and, of course, they get the name out there anyway. Mm. Um so I thought she could have played a bit uh, along with it, but um, I don't know. It, it might not have been in her repertoire of styles. Um, do, you, a, do you think the texts were real? Because um, i tell you what struck me about the text. I got my uh, Poirot hat on. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, don't be impressed. It's just a woolly hat with Poirot <laughs> written on the front. <laughs> Is that the pink woolly hat we saw in uh, Who is America? Who is America, yeah, when I go undercover as a lesbian. <laughs> I didn't want to be too judgy. <laughs> um, I thought... I'll take my hat off to you. And, and we, we both speak as people who've done radio shows where people have texted in, and I thought, they're very long, these texts. Right. Did you did you notice that? Did you pick up? On no, that? I didn't notice that. No, I see. I I'd go into uh, you know, switch off my Poirot while I'm when I'm listening. But um, <laughs> I, I I should have switched it back on. Clearly, yeah. Were they necessarily? Were they definitely announced as text as opposed to? Yeah, yeah. This is all. I was, I was texted us. I thought, oh god, we're doing text now. Mind you, I've got... I don't know where it went, because I had it before and then it went away and then it's come back again. Um, a, a rebooting of my computer and uh, a restore has brought back texts on my laptop, which is very handy, ladies, to save your nails. No, that's a joke. Um, very poor one of that. Um, no, I, 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 to save your um, muscle groups, actually, madam, um, because it's not very good for you to... Uh, <laughs> What am I saying? It's much healthier to type on a proper sized keyboard. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And you and what I was going to go on to say was, of course, you can type at greater length. Therefore, so they could have been typing them in on their laptop. No, mm. not convinced, Poirot. I, I, it could be. I mean, just because I I just type yeah and no and uh, just because you used to write text to yourself because no one was listening to you on the radio. Yeah. I mean, I I just. Type yes, no, and use the aubergine emoji, and that's it for me. Really. That tends to well, do with or without the cherries. That <laughs> tends to do everything I need to say. I'm a man of few worms. Yeah, um, if only. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in the no, wrong job. I, I just kind of thought, oh, are they real? I don't know. Um, I don't, I just thought it was kind of. I had, a, I had a, an old boss who used to say, um, he used to refer to it as, "What's your favourite sandwich filling?" And uh, I thought it was kind of getting close to close to that kind of that kind oh, of. The, I was just thinking the other day, actually preempting your possible reaction to this, although I did hope for uh, for better. But um, 
I was remembering the worst question I ever heard. I can't say the name of the radio station. But they started brand new shows. I think the whole schedule had been shaken up as they do every so often, maybe not for a couple of years. But so start of the week, the Monday, blah, 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 new lineup, everything. Tuesday's show on this unmentionable radio station was now it's our second show since we've started. We want you to text in with what's the uh, what's the something that you've done for the second time recently? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so let me guess what it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> the third time. All that, it's a, all that, the sound of barrels being scraped on day two, that was the worry. The interesting thing, I was, talking to, I was talking to somebody in the radio industry the other day and we were talking about Radio 2 and I was saying very often that's their offering now, isn't it? Graham Norton will do what's your favourite crisp flavour and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think it's... Mm. Uh, it's um, in, the, in the absence of talking about anything else of interest i suppose i don't know i don't know but my argument would be even if there was a slight fictionalization at some stage it's what you produce out of it isn't it and you clearly weren't particularly happy with what was produced but uh it's just a hook in fact i remember you telling me in my early days don't press uh, that button there <laughs> <laughs> but i did because i'm a rebel you see yeah, yeah. The legs fell off uh, your desk. It turns out you <laughs> you were second guess. No, that was my wooden leg. But the, the point was, you said anything like that, any competition, we were still running competitions in the olden days, yeah. or any uh, any solicits, as they're called in some parts of the media forest, You know, put, put it out to the audience. It's just an excuse for interaction. So what it comes down to is surely the quality of what you get out of it. It's what you give the listener off the back of whatever comes back. Mm, I think... Because a good performer... Sorry, just to finish the thought, the good performer can, can you know, take the most awful text and spin it around. Yeah, I think maybe that's what was lacking then. Perhaps that was... Uh, I mean, it was unashamed, unashamedly feminine, wasn't it, this? It was, was, a, was a... Like, even their producer... Um, I hate it when people refer to their producer as producer Mike or producer Fred or... <laughs> anyway, so producer Jenny... Um, right. That they mentioned, and I thought, oh, so it's like it's producer. So there's no, there's no omnisexual awareness at all, is there in there? Because um, it, they've only got a female perspective, presumably from the from the whole thing. I, I just, I just felt it wasn't. For, I mean, it wasn't for me. I'm not their audience. It's you know, I, I'm, like I say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't listen to the radio station um, mm. at all because I don't think it's for me. Um, mm. And it's quite, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hide from that. It's. Uh, it's quite it's quite obvious. I did connect at one point though, uh, interestingly enough, and I don't I don't want to ruin it because I think it's your final clip out of the three. So when well, we... let's let's go into that clip. Do you want to feed into the clip? Um, yeah. Okay. It was it was um, one of them's pregnant. Ellie is pregnant. Yeah. Thanks. Like seven weeks in as this show was recorded. Yeah. God, you have been paying attention. Um, I have. Yeah. And um, so does that? Cause isn't this episode seven? Is that? Does that mean she conceived on the first episode? <laughs> actually, I say that. She makes a reference to seven weeks pregnant, but actually in the context of what you'd put on a profile for internet dating. So scratch that. It may be nothing to do with uh, the timing for her. Oh, OK. Uh, I was going to say... She probably wouldn't be telling the world, would she? That's a hell of a, hell of a green room, isn't it, if that was the case? But anyway, so... <laughs> uh, I'll just have some nuts, thank you. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> And she, she was she was going on about the fact that um, she's pregnant, and um, they were talking about NCT classes, mm. Mm. Um, which was the only point where I kind of I connected and I thought, oh yeah, um, because I I sided with the one who didn't didn't like them because that's what we thought as well. Um, oh, Anna walked out after week two of her NCT. Classes, yeah, maybe she stuck two yeah. to be honest with you, but um, I think we mm. we booked one and then just phoned up and cancelled it and said, actually, no, we're all right, thank you. Um, we're having a baby. We don't want to make friends, sort of thing. But anyway, <laughs> so that that's what they were talking about. It leads us in quite nicely, doesn't it? Making friends at NCT, National Childbirth Ting. So yeah, I'm going to be presented with a whole load of potential new friends, and I desperately want them to love me. No pressure if any of you are listening. You don't know, but I want to be your best friend, please. <laughs> 
my my friend, my special birthing friend. Yes. <laughs> my dad doesn't believe in best friends. He said to me, you shouldn't call anyone your best friend because it isolates others. Okay. Yeah. I understand what it means because I've got a variety of best friends, I would say, oh. that I will call on in various circumstances. I think friends are like shoes. They're so different special. shoes fit different occasions. Sometimes, you know, you want an espadrille. Sometimes only a mule will do. And you always know what's right. And then I shall call upon said footwear. Charlotte, you're the mule. Yeah, I won't say who is the mule. Who is the croc of friendship? <laughs> I thought they were going to say a croc of something else for a moment, but never mind. Um, yes, and uh, you spelt out NCT, but their uh, abbreviations were um, of a different nature. Oh, it was actually Anna's partner um who <laughs> with her walks out so he didn't have too many good words to say about the nct mm. um but you realize you've missed out on uh, on friend making opportunities but knowing you as i do yeah i'm guessing you don't sit there in deep mourning and regret well i think we've we've spoken before about my deep hatred of people <laughs> and uh and uh, i was dying to say actually that i'd misheard on the phone um, and we went to NCP instead for the first week. But it, <laughs> and it was so cold there, we decided we weren't going to go for a second week. It was, and the, the fumes, it was terrible. Uh, yeah, um, that's wrong on so many levels. Yeah. Well, that's a Tim oh. Vine gag, isn't it? <laughs> that's really clever, that was one. Was it yeah. stealing from multi-storey car parks yeah. is wrong on so many levels? Is that all right? On so I many levels, that, that is good. I like, that's, is that a Milton Jones joke by any it's chance? It's Tim Vine, Tim Vine, oh, keep up. Oh, awesome. Well, they're else heard, they're very that? similar, aren't they? They're kind of very... Um, Tim Jones and Milton Vine. Milton Vine. I don't yeah. know if I agree, but uh, that will be yet another great digression potentially. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. So, um, yeah, but I kind of thought, oh no, I, I, I get that completely. The whole, uh, but I mean, there was even sort of sex and sexism in that as well, wasn't there? You know, this this idea that the only thing they got out of it was they got all the men to to bend over, and when they complained about the pain. Then, mm. then they knew what it was like to have. I think I, I understand what pain is. Do you know what I mean? I've I've had pain mm. before. I'm not I'm not immune to pain because I'm a man. Uh, there were lots of little things that kind of niggled me and annoyed me. Like the, um, they were talking about a, a, a Nazi plane. Something sounded like a Nazi plane. Oh, that's really un PC. What? Why is a Why is a Nazi plane unpolitically correct? I don't understand that. Accents offending people. Why do accents offend people? I don't. I don't, mm. Not all. We just say this stuff now, like it's like it's fact, and and I get kind of cross with anyone that I hear just uh, just spouting this this nonsense out all the while, because because it is that's exactly what it is, you know. It's it's not offensive to do um, a, a Welsh accent, but it's offensive to do um, a Asian accent. It's just ridiculous, you know, absolutely ridiculous. So it was like kind of lots of little bits that kind of got me a bit niggly but the highlight for me the best bit by a long way was when they libeled Suzanne Shaw I thought that was fabulous um <laughs> and also and also they missed the one that they actually they actually um I don't know you can't you can't libel a, a um a business um, well you you can libel I think you can but you can but, you can do damage to reputation can't you I think which is a separate but, yeah. but poor old and embargo I don't know if you looked it up but embargo is still in operation in Northampton a nightclub which they described as a dodgy nightclub Ooh. Um, so I thought, well, that'd be quite interesting. Uh, embargo. But you've repeated the libel, if libel it be. So oh, we're oh, but I'd, be in the clink. I'm just going to tell you now that that is not my view at all because I found out <laughs> that Embargo is a cutting edge nightclub set on a three story converted <laughs> shoe factory in the town centre of Northampton. So pick... Well, it's your favourite theme, shoes, you see. Exactly. It's a certain <laughs> exactly. continuous theme. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, right, okay. I tell you what that was interesting as well is that, and, and you'll have had this in radio, is that is that um, what, have you heard their show? Does their does their show have music? Does it? Does it no, make... this is my uh, regret. Actually, I thought it's bad planning on my part. I should have listened to the show, which became the podcast, uh, and I couldn't see it. I don't think they make it available for catch up because probably they they wouldn't want to cannibalise the podcast mm. uh, ratings so no but it does have music in it which has been snipped out right because it was just like kind of the length of conversations and then lumping them all together is i found it i found it quite a, a tough listen because it kind of breaks the rules of of you know um radio in that sense does it? i know podcast is a different beast but this to me yeah he's just it's just a radio show by another name i mean it's you know um 
I don't I don't know. But but I found I found the the, the big lump of half an hour I found was kind of tough really. Mm. Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking now, can I think of any show that A you will find a, a comedy and B enjoy that I'll also enjoy? Um I've just got a feeling if there's a Venn diagram with what you like and what I like and what we class as comedy. I really like it's vanishingly small where it meets in the middle. I really like Sarah Kendall. I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, I can't do that every week, though, can we? No, I, mean, I say, she, I she say, can't write a new show for us every week. I really liked uh, Carnival of Monsters. I listened to the whole two series of Carnival of Monsters outside of the show, didn't I? I really, ladies and gentlemen, I've got him on the back foot. Can you hear? Yeah, I love it. Can you hear? <laughs> I'm only teasing. Calm down. You wait till next week, kiddo. Oh, God, what are you going to get me back with? Well, uh, we've got to do the star rating. Oh, oh is this going to be your lowest ever star rating? <sighs> yeah. See, I'm I'm going to mark it against uh, what it's meant to be, how it delivers the thing that it sets out to do, which to me is light entertainment stroke comedy, predominantly with uh, what we say in the trade, a female skew, slightly uncomfortable term, Um Shall I go first then? Mm. I give it was it three and a half to four, three and a half for what it sets out to to do. I mean, the people who love it really love it. I I believe that, and I think uh, unless you think it's the same people who might be fictionalising texts or writing um, rave uh, star reviews on iTunes, I, I think I think it it, it does have a. Uh, I, I think it's the kind of show that will have a, a loyal following, and they may, you know, might be a TV show around the corner for you to enjoy as well. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> I, I just because I, I think, yeah, you're right, and they will have a loyal following, and they will have. I mean, you know, Heart has got a lot of listeners. They're a big, they're a big concern, aren't they? Big radio station, so they, they've got mm, a big mm. audience. They've got a big captive audience, so they should yeah. have a, a, a decent. Um, uh, reaction and should have a decent a decent following i suppose really if if it's just one percent of of hearts total then it's it's a big number isn't it do you know what i mean so yeah yeah um i, I, I don't can i give it zero or is that well, we is never that... sat down to write the rules but if we'd written them you'd only break them anyway exactly yeah exactly so I'll... I'll say yes you can give it zero therefore you shouldn't because you've got to break the rules okay in fact i insist you give it zero so you mustn't Okay, I'll give it zero then. And and oh. and, and for for you know, I hold nothing against these two ladies. Um, in terms, much of, as you may wish to. In, in <laughs> Sorry, I went a bit less Dawson. In, in, in terms, in terms of, um, you know what they're trying to do. It, it's not for me, is it? I mean, it's not. It's. I feel a bit of a fraud. Mm. Um, reviewing it in a way, in that sense, because you know it's it's content that's not for me. Mm. in a podcast that's not for me, that's broadcast originally on a radio station that's not for me. There was extra material. Uh, Obviously didn't do it for you, but... But, but it's still the same, it's the same vein, isn't it, really? I was intrigued, actually, as to what the new material and what wasn't on the radio would be. Um, which If I, it was chronological, I think it was the kind of postscript where they're mopping up the, um, the alleged libel. Um, right. Okay, uh, accidental libel, we must say. Yeah, yeah, um, but yeah, I've, I've, I found it, and 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 you know, probably, I wouldn't listen to anything on the other end of the scale on Radio Bloke either, because I kind of wouldn't, I wouldn't find that um, enjoyable either. Right, I'm surprised you only gave it zero, um, because I thought you'd think it at some level for some people it would have. Merit, but you're marking it from a. I can yeah, I can only say for me. I mean, I didn't mm. enjoy it. I I didn't find it funny. Um, I found it more irritating than anything. Um, and that Violet Elizabeth voice that one of them does. Um, is that the creepy? I want to be your friend <laughs> thing. Just I, I quite just like thought, that. Oh, it's just like. <laughs> We're chalk and cheese, aren't we? It was like nails on the blackboard for me. That was. Where's that? Uh, where's that character from then? It's it's just William, isn't it? Violet Elizabeth. Oh right. That's I was it, thinking it was Bonnie right, Langford, wasn't okay. it? I think in the. I thought it was more a sort of um, one of those thrillery, horrory type things. Right. I want <laughs> like, to be your friend. You know, with one of those toys that's got staring eyes, like Chucky or something like that. From I don't the, know. I've, uh, 
Chucky's in love. No, that's yeah. something yeah. else entirely. But yeah, but yeah, but like I say, I can only review it from my perspective, and mm. I I didn't, you know, there was nothing in there apart from that that one sort of brief connection with National Childbirth Trust. Um, yeah. Nothing really connected with me. I didn't feel like I connected with them. Um, I I wouldn't, you know, if it was on the radio, I would either leave the room, switch it off, or jump out the car. <laughs> Could you do all three? I, I could try. <laughs> I, I could try. I could give it a go. I, um, I'd pay to see that. If it, just make sure it's videoed. Yeah, yeah. But you um, know, as I often say to you, everybody can't like everything, and and you no. know that it just it just didn't it just didn't connect for me at all. Um, but yeah, okay. uh, you know, other than that, well, I loved it. Well, I think that you've just <laughs> sealed its fate as probably the forerunner of the. Uh, most popular TV show of the next couple of years. Uh, I think they might get snapped up. You never know. I can't see a TV um, show. I mean, in fact, Heart TV has just been closed, hasn't it? I think. Um, well, it doesn't have to be Heart, but uh, a double-headed chat show. I couldn't. No, they don't I tend couldn't. to do those, But, I mean, you know, like I say... Well, you won't be watching it. No, no. It's like, it's like you know, I remember watching Graham Norton. He was the first, I think, the forerunner of these um, kind of self-obsessed uh, interviewers. Um, and I remember he was, I can't know who he was, but he was interviewing somebody. Um, and I thought, oh, man, I'd, I'd, I've never seen this person being interviewed before. It was like a real A-lister, you know, they're kind of quite, quite like a Michael Caine kind of person who doesn't give that many interviews, whatever. I thought, oh, I'm yeah. going to watch this, it'd be brilliant. And it was just, it was all about him. And he said, oh, I just found a website with <laughs> genitals on and all this kind of, you know. And it's yeah. just like, oh, no, I, I wanted to... I wanted to tune in for your guests, but yeah, so I, maybe they will. They probably have. I I would say the first person in British TV to to really be the self obsessed interviewer would have to be Clive Anderson, surely. So it predates Graham Norton, but hey, it, yeah, but he kind of we could argue about that. He did make a, a bit of an effort to try and try and show some casual interest in in, in, in the guest. Didn't <laughs> You're they? being enormously kind for you. Yeah. Um, I'm anyway. so long ago. Perhaps I don't know. With, uh, with, yeah. Uh, with them. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, well, I think I think the rot started then. But anyway, so it's a global original podcast. Ellie and Anna have issues. We were reviewing uh, episode seven, which um, was about internet dating and making friends. And yeah, <laughs> listen to it or don't listen to it. It's your choice, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. But it does have an. E for explicit rating. All right. So to yeah. my homework for next week from you. Yeah, your homework for now. This is this is uh, full of jeopardy. This one because um, oh, not again. I I watched the first series. Yeah. And uh, in fact, me and uh, me and my wife watched the first series, and um, we didn't get past episode three, which for you is unheard of. Mm, isn't it? it is pretty well. Um, because we didn't, we just couldn't get on with it at all. But it got commissioned for a second series, and it's on right now. And when I say right now, I don't mean right now this second. I mean it's on at the moment. Um, Running. It's Jack D. Oh, ah, no, not but Lead Balloon. No, 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 that was years ago. It's actually from no. the writer of Lead Balloon, believe it or not. Not Pete Sinclair. Yeah. Oh, friend, a friend of a friend, actually. Oh right, uh, yeah. Know, carry on. Do you know what? If you see him. Can you can you just give him a big kiss to me for lead balloon? Because I just oh, thought, do I have to. Oh, that was just it's awesome. not my sort. Awesome that right, was. Right, okay. Anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah. So and it's called Bad Move. Uh, Jack D and Kerry Godleyman. Big fan of Kerry Godleyman. I think I think she's still got some even better things to do um, than the the comedy acting she's done so far. But um, they're they're basically it's a it's a sitcom, uh, half hour sitcom. They're a a, a couple who. I think they lost their jobs or something, or one of them lost their jobs or something like that. Mm. And they decide they're going to move out to the countryside. And that's the premise, basically. Um, it's them. It's a bit It's a bit like, when I think about it, it's a bit like the green, green grass, if you remember the spin-off from Only Fools and Horses. Uh, I don't, but... Yeah. Where Marlene and Boyce are on the run from the Driscoll brothers and go and live um, in Shropshire, as you would. <laughs> if you, if you, don't knock a county I've worked in. If you're on, if you're on the, uh, I know they've still got the scars in the landscape. To prove it. <laughs> well, I've got a loyal fan base to prove it. <laughs> good man, good man. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. so so that's it. So uh, it's called Bad Move, okay. and um, I think we should go for episode uh, one of series two. 
Not episode one. Yeah. Good old tried and trusted. That means I might actually get up to speed with the story, albeit series series two. Yeah, series two, yeah. Yeah. Series two, episode one. Is Uh, that on the Beeb? Um, no, it's ITV, actually, I think. ITV. ITV. Right. So that's your As, homework for uh, next Stuart week. Stuart Lee called it the, the failed state of television. I loved that. I laughed out loud when he said that. Called what? What was failed state? Uh, called ITV the failed state of TV. Oh, right. I just... Uh, it doesn't tickle you in the way it tickled me. No. This is the idea of it just collapsing. But he wouldn't say that if they gave him a, a series. No. And I, I was, was going to say, and the BBC is... Mm. Yeah, well, oh, we got through most of the show without you knocking the beep too hard. No, I'm just saying it is like he's working for the BBC and it's like kind of well, like that's like a perfect broadcaster. Do you know what I mean? So, well, you don't bite the hand that feeds, do you? No, nah, probably. I mean, it's not. not like you'd have a go at me, is it? Because we're working on the same project. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> you diss my taste, man. <laughs> anyway, if you've enjoyed this podcast. Note, uh, we'll be very surprised. No, we're, we're delighted. <laughs> we'll be absolutely amazed. I mean, it's been comedy gold. I know because uh, <laughs> because I know what, I know what the yardstick is now. <laughs> so, so uh, but if I you know ha- where it's been, if you have, if you'd like to catch up with any of the other episodes, you can you can catch us on YouTube and you can catch us on uh, Apple Podcasts and uh, Spreaker and all sorts of places like that. In fact, if you, if you just put the comedy slab into your favourite search engine. Uh, as long as your favourite search engine's Google, it'll probably come up. <laughs> I think it would come up on any search engine, but has anyone these days heard of any? I, I used to go for Alta Vista back in the day, but wow. has anyone heard of that these days? I just I just type in random things like Wabsnasm or, you know, whatever, <laughs> and just to see whether it's a search engine comes up. Because I haven't got a clue. What is Yahoo still going, isn't it, I think? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, a quick mention for social media and then we will um, let you get on with your lives. Um, so we are at Comedy Slab on Twitter and also at the Facebook. And that's pretty much it. But if you want to throw in any suggestions, they can only do better than zero, can't they? Or no worse. Yeah. Can we go into negative territory? No, let's not even float the idea. <laughs> <laughs> so till next time. It's a farewell from me. Yeah, and uh, if you can please like us, and let's please be friends. (laughs) I want to be your friend.